Sorry. Uh, I am Paola Corti. I am the Open Education Community Manager at uh, Spark Europe. And uh, this is Monique Schoutsen. <laughs> Yes, uh, Monique Schouten, Radboud University uh, of Nijmegen, the Netherlands. At, I work uh, at the library. Okay. And I'm a member of, uh, <laughs> of the annual uh, group. But you are going to tell about this. Yeah, thank you, Monique. So, um, uh, what we are talking today about is uh, the development of this uh, toolkit that you see here. And we used uh, one of the tools themselves to prepare this presentation. Uh, the ENOL is the European Network of Open Education Librarians. Uh, actually, I am not a librarian myself. I am more like an instructional designer, while all other people, uh, including Monique, are librarians, and I am a great admirer of their skills because I think they are key to the development of open education. Uh, what we did together was to dis decide one, and one year ago, something like this, yes, uh, to develop a, a toolkit, uh, including uh, something that could help librarians advocate for open education with key messages. So we started uh, um, working on it, like it, and I presented it as an easy task, which wasn't, as you can see from the image here. This is just a, a part of one of the huge spreadsheets that we used to develop the toolkit. So. Uh, it was me telling something that was not really true, right, Monique? <laughs> I know about that. <laughs> and also, this came with few instructions, as you can see. So this is the second slide of the tools themselves. And, uh, well, actually, what we tried to do was to share um, something that could be used quite easily, but at a certain point, uh, uh, even if we tried to keep it very simple with a few instructions to support uh, people reusing them as easily as possible, we encountered some difficulties. <laughs> it all seemed Turkish. This is Turkish, actually. Those are the instructions in Turkish. So uh, what we did was to start with the three simple tools. And this is Greek, if you want to uh, have a look at different languages. <laughs> Uh, but everything was uh, challenging for us, but at the same time, very, uh, um, uh, it, it was a great chance for us to learn, I think. Let's start from the beginning. What did we do? We decided to develop three, key, three tools. One was a, a set of slides, and this is an example of them. This presentation starts from this tool. Another one was a, a, um, a set of Twitter cards which uh, in our idea can help very quickly advocate for uh, key messages related to open education. And the third one were posters that uh, librarians can easily print and add to their libraries, to the walls of their libraries. Of course, all of these was shared uh, with a CC BY license, but uh, the main idea behind this was to create documents that were in their template format. So we didn't want any logo on them. On the other side, we shared suggestions about where to put the institution logo so that uh, it was even easier for librarians, hopefully, to reuse them. And the aim was not to advocate about our uh, uh, foundation. The idea was to help support librarians in their everyday job. Uh, and uh, what we did, in a few numbers. We uh, had nine starting documents that we shared with the key messages, uh, the references that we've been working on, um, uh, the, the, let's say the behind the scene management tools that we wanted to use and that can support our work properly. Then we organized an, an, a sort of hackathon within the annual members uh, early last summer because we wanted to make it playful, but then librarians, you know librarians maybe, they are very serious in, in what they do. So we had wonderful references coming from these hackathon activities. Actually, we involved also some of the ideas that we grabbed from a webinar 
where we met with Neil Butcher from OER Africa. And he was do talking about uh, uh, collecting documents that proved about uh, the uh, effectiveness of open education. So we started there. And then we were required somehow to have around five to six uh, uh, translations of the tools because we've been funded from, from Hewlett Foundation to work on open education. And this was part of the agreement to have tools in five to six languages. But then look at this number. We came up with 16 and one more is on uh, its way now uh, from the Danish uh, members. So we are going to have 17 soon. And uh, we worked with uh, 31 plus uh, volunteers because members involved were 31, but then each of them reached out to friends, colleagues at the university level, uh, advocate for open, like Robert Schuer, for example, <laughs> at the Netherlands level. And then uh, in order to have the best version possible of those toolkits. And we've been working around uh, six months, I would say something more than that, uh, even if you consider that uh, more translation might come, it's going to become longer. But it was not a full-time job for anyone, even if the effort was quite uh, um, large. And uh, no, all nightmares have been kept uh, carefully behind the scenes because we didn't want our librarians to be frightened. And uh, I see those in the room that are laughing is because they were involved. <laughs> and they got the nightmare from experience. And then we had to do some key choices. As I said, we, we went for the template version. We didn't want any logo in them because we wanted them, as I said, to be very easily adaptable from librarians. Uh, we did their own uh, logos and also their own institutional colors. So we, our choice was to, to have it easy and uh, um, easy to adapt and as clean as, and neat in the graphic as possible because uh, we don't want our librarians to be expert in working with uh, graphical uh, programs, but in case they are, they are free to adapt and enhance the version of the simple toolkit that we provided. Uh, so we wanted them to be reusable with almost no skills uh, required. And uh, we created the, the, the slide that I showed you with all the instructions that are very clear. We checked them with more than one person in order to be sure that different profiles were able to go through them, but they can easily be deleted with a click. Okay, so it, everything is in one slide. And if you want to reuse the, the tool in itself, it's easy for you to remove the instructions. Why we did an hackathon? Because we wanted the librarians to feel confident in bringing those messages forward. And also, uh, if they didn't feel comfortable with that, we wanted uh, them to speak out loud to the messages and to discuss them in advance. Because we wanted to be our first advocate, our first believers in what the message would have been. So we wanted them to be uh, totally uh, in agreement with it. And we rewrite, re re sorry for my R, uh, the messages more than once because uh, sometimes we had a disagreement, but then we came back uh, to the final shared version. Um, so let's go quickly through the format itself. So you will see my messages in orange because all the rest that you see is the main, is part of the toolkit itself. So we wanted the formal, the format, sorry, to be as simple as you can imagine it. But then you can adapt it. This is a photo that I took in one of my wanderings in the, in the Alps. And this is my uh, avatar created by Christine Ranzi in Manchester, reusing uh, uh, um, pieces of the, from the Rijksmuseum. Uh, so imagine that. I just changed the, the background and that was it. Okay, and instead of the logo, I added the uh, uh, CC BY shared version of myself provided by Chrissy. And then we wanted uh, uh, mm, the content, uh, all you can reuse in different sides. So as you can see, those are key questions that librarians might advocate around talking directly to those questions with the audience or asking the questions 
to their audience in meetings, uh, in libraries, etc. And then, um, first, we wanted basic doubts uh, so that uh, you can easily understand that librarians can give you the answers to those questions. But second, uh, we wanted uh, basic messages at the beginning so that you can build on them. And uh, you can see that uh, those are the basic messages that we shared. And third, we wanted the UNESCO ER recommendation to be in the picture because we always focus on implementing the UNESCO ER recommendation. So even with those basic starting point toolkit, we wanted to recognize that the UNESCO ER recommendation is there and that librarians are not alone in implementing it. So we provided some of the key messages that are in it. And finally, we started with the benefits. So I'm going to go through them very quickly because you can all reach out to them in Zenodo. They are publicly uh, available there in all the languages. And we share, the, first of all, the list of the five favorites uh, coming from the annual community. But then we wanted to provide them in more than one size. And not only our favorites, because uh, we listed in the end in the toolkit whichever benefit we found and we have references about. The list of references is available too in Zenodo. So we wanted them to be available for anyone because librarians might have different needs in their context. And if you want to have a tool that is reusable, uh, well, our aim was to make it as reusable as possible and as adaptable, very quickly adaptable as possible to the needs of the specific library where the librarian want to re wanted to reuse them. We addressed four different stakeholders. So as you see, the first one is students, but then change of color, very simple. Again, you go to teachers and then you have institutions but the structure is the same, so again, it's easy to mix them if you need to. And then um, also we provided uh, benefits that are proved to be beneficial for citizens at large, for all. So we celebrated uh, during the Open Education Week with this Open Education Month because it w we had too many translations to, <laughs> to be kept in a week. And that this is the Twitter card that we shared during the Open Education Week. But now I would leave the floor to Monique, who went through the process as a librarian. And okay. she will bring you the other side of the coin. <laughs> OK. Uh, so I am uh, Monique Schouten. I'm um, from Nijmegen, as I told, I'm from the Netherlands, and uh, I'm the translator for the Dutch uh, version of the annual uh, toolkit. Um, yes, uh, as um, uh, Paula said, uh, she asked volunteers for uh, this project, and I thought, well, uh, in the coming two weeks, I, I have a few hours uh, spare, so so I will translate this, in the, and then I'm done. <laughs> But I thought I only had to translate uh, the Excel sheet, but I also had to bring the <laughs> translation in, into the um, uh, different uh, sections of the toolkit. So in the PowerPoints and in the Twitter cards and in the leaflets, posters. Um, and they all look the same, but they slightly differed. So, so I sometimes completely lost uh, my way into all those uh, tools. Um, uh, a Belgian uh, colleague of mine, uh, he uh, um, offered to review um, uh, the translation. I thought, well, one or two changes. I mean, I'm pretty good at English. <laughs> and then uh, the, the whole project is uh, done. But um, Flemish is a little bit different from uh, Dutch. So we had large discussions about some words. Okay, five minutes, yes. <laughs> um, like uh, in Dutch, you can, you can translate uh, institution into instituten. But in uh, Belgium, that's not a word for universities, etc. So we had some discussions and some Zoom sessions. And... Uh, well, uh, it was not only a few hours, but uh, a few days that I worked on it. 
And then I was ready, so I thought, well, uh, let's, uh, for instance, uh, send it to Robert Schuwer, uh, our OER guru in uh, in uh, the Netherlands. Uh, so, so that actually uh, all the institutions uh, can use it. But he had some comments also on, on the text. Uh, he was he didn't agree with with all of the text, the the, the original text. So I sent it to uh, Paula his feedback. And then he had some Dutch words like uh, uh, education materials. I translated in onderwijsmaterialen, but uh, the um, the term they use in the Netherlands is leermaterialen. Um, and if you uh, take the wrong term uh, or other terms that that uh, the whole of the community uses, well, uh, the, the toolkit will not be used. So I uh, changed. Uh, I, I, uh, followed his uh, suggestion. So uh, I thought it would be an easy task, but it turned out to be a, um, a Herculean task. <laughs> but still, uh, I'm very proud of the result, and that's what counts, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, I, I'm happy that Monique came and shared the heavy part of the work, because uh, that's what happens when you decide to engage in uh, a translation process, and you are not uh, like a, a localization company, you know. It's, uh, uh, we, we are a community of volunteers who engage and believe in open education, but uh, I was conscious about uh, the timing. And also we had uh, librarians translating while uh, uh, being at home with a broken arm. You can, you can imagine any kind of scenario uh, that happened. But uh, at the, the main point is that we, everybody believed that we needed those tools in local languages. Uh, Europe is made with many countries and uh, we have many different languages, and uh, this is a small example of what happens in a global community. So even if it was uh, challenging sometimes, but some of the tools came up to be very effective. For example, the initial decision to keep uh, the translation sheet very simple with small sentences uh, in each line helped me quite largely because I don't speak any Russian, I don't speak any Hungarian. I can assure you I don't speak even Ukrainian or Greek or many of the languages that are available, but I had to, to make a lot of checks before we published, and I needed to be aware of what was what and where. <laughs> so having the right tools can be helpful, but most of all it's the commitment of people and the conviction in the end that we need uh, contents to be available in many different languages to advocate properly. And this is our practice. Questions? <laughs> uh, and also, the link to this presentation is uh, in OE Global Connect available to anyone. If you want to download, uh, the toolkit is available. If you want to reach out to us, we are here. <laughs> Any question? <laughs> Any questions for Monique or Paula? So, um, Paula, then let me ask a question. So, um, uh, I, I noticed Monique mentioned that uh, she got feedback from other Dutch native speakers. How about making this into a community uh, uh, um, community feedback? Uh, thing as well. I mean, you could also always just put it out there, ask for feedback from the community, and then bring that back, right? Is, was that something that you considered to do? or argue? Actually, we did. And uh, some of the feedback, considering, for example, the one that we received from Robert, were, was key to support us announcing the original version of the NOL toolkit, also in its original version in English. Because uh, thanks to the feedback that we received, uh, we have a, a new English version with improvements, which makes it even better. And we did the same. Uh, most of the work was done at the national level from different uh, groups. But uh, we are open to receive feedback from anyone. And uh, sometimes it happens. And it's a, a gift that the community provides us. So if you want to go to the toolkit and they provide us feedback, we are more than happy to implement changes accordingly. That's really practicing what you preach, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, any other questions? Yes.
may seem very, very simple, but where can we find the results? <laughs> it's in Zenodo. It's, uh, it's uh, uploaded in Zenodo, and uh, the presentation has the link active, and I also provided the link into OI Global Connect. Thank so, you very much. <laughs> I'm out of battery. Uh, so this is okay. where I don't see it on the presentation. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. In that case, thank you again, Paula and Monique. Um, and I ask, I'd like to ask Shors to the stage then. Thank you.